This is the Lawrence World War I Project. I'm Steve Holman, Lawrence native, and today we're going to tell you about some of the battles in World War I that took place in France. So I decided here at the brand new State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, to bring in somebody who was actually born in France to help us with this. And the Hall of Famer himself, Dominique Wilkins, is here. And, uh, Nick, you were born in France, and uh, your father was in the service, correct? Y yes. I, I lived my first four or five years in France, and my dad was in the Army for over 29 years. So the big military background, my family, my grandfather also served in the military. So an extensive military background. It was fun growing up, you know, at least part of my life in Paris, and then finally moved to Maryland. And I know you're very happy to help out with this project. Oh, this is a great project. and it, It's really paying homage to the people who stood on the wall for us and some of those forgotten names that people uh, have forgotten over the years and always looking to pay tribute to the people who took care of us. It's a great thing that we're doing here and uh, we're happy to help out. And today we're going to hear about another Lawrence hero from World War I, James Schofield. James Schofield was born in Boston on October 3, 1894. The Schofield family moved to Lawrence when James was a young boy, and he received his education at the Arlington and Tarbox schools. He lived with his family at 146 Arlington Street, and when he was 16, he worked at the Arlington Mill as a dofer. A dofer is someone who removes empty spindles or bobbins from the machines and then replaces them with new ones. Before he was drafted into the American Expeditionary Force, Schofield lived at 520 Hampshire Street and was an operator at the Russell Paper Mill. He trained at Camp Devens in Ayer, Massachusetts for three months, beginning in September 1917, before continuing his training at Camp Gordon, just outside of Augusta, Georgia. He left for Europe on June 22, 1918, as a member of the 148th Infantry Regiment, 37th Division. In early August, Schofield's division entered the war in the Baccarat sector in the French region of Lorraine. They saw little action, and within a month, they were moved 60 miles northwest to relieve the 79th Division in the Avacourt sector. Here they engaged the enemy for four days in the great Meuse-Argonne offensive. Shortly afterwards, they were moved to relieve the 89th Division in mid-October in the Pan sector, about 150 miles south of Avacourt. Finally, by the end of October, the 37th Division traveled north to Belgium to meet with the French Army to attack the enemy. In this battle, known as the Ypres Lies Offensive, the Germans began a retreat, and they consolidated their forces east of the Scheldt River. Schofield and his division built a bridge made up of trees and nearby housing rubble to cross the river. On November 2nd, under heavy machine and gunfire, Schofield was killed attempting to cross the river. James Schofield was 23 years old, and he was originally buried in France. In 1919, though, his mother petitioned the government to bring his remains home. And in the summer of 1920, Schofield's remains were brought back to Lawrence, and he was the first Lawrence boy to have his remains returned home. In 1921, Alderman Michael Scanlon offered a proposal that was adopted by the city council to rename the Lawrence Street Playstead as the Hayden Schofield Playstead, named after both James Schofield and fellow World War I hero who was also killed in action, Frank Hayden. You've been watching the Lawrence World War I Project. I'm Steve Holman, a proud graduate of Lawrence High School, the phenomenal class of 1972. Thanks a lot for joining us and supporting the Lawrence World War I Project.